In this video, I'll be showing you some tips on how you can get the most out of Recollector's editing environment. In this case, I'll be working with my map collection, and I will be making changes to the record that you see displayed on the screen for this particular map. I can click on the Edit button, which brings up the editing window. Now, one of the things you control through the editing window is the style for text. You don't have to have all of your text just in one style. You can use uh, bold, italics, underline, different styling uh, choices are available to you. In this case, I want to represent something about the title of the map. Let me bring up for a second the image of this particular map. And I'll bring it up full size and scroll down to the area where the title of the map is shown. And you'll notice that the last four words in the title are actually represented in italics on the map. Well, let's say I want to reflect that same uh, style in the representation of the title in the data record. Well, I can select those last four words from the title. And then by right-clicking, I can bring up the context menu. And in the context menu under text styles, I can choose italic. And now we can see it's represented by italics here. But more importantly, if I click OK and return to the item details in the display of the record's data, the title is now partially in italics as well. Let me show you another feature. This is the feature I refer to as jump to links. A jump to link is a, is a hyperlink that lets you jump from one record in your collection to a different record. For example, this particular map happens to be based on another earlier map, one that is also in my collection, and I want to uh, mention that in, this, in the information about the map. And I do that here, and I say that it's a reduced version of map number 15. That number is the ID number of the other map in my collection. But I can more than just refer to the number or refer to the other record by number, I can actually make a link that will take me right there. I select the ID number and right click and choose to format this as a jump to link. Okay, now we take a look at it. We notice it's now a blue underlined hyperlink. Let's take a look at it in the item details and there indeed it's shown as a hyperlink. Let's click on it. It takes me directly to that other record. I can do control B to return back to the record we're working on. Let's open the edit, edit window again. And again, take a look at the uh, information field. If you look back at the uh, background window, you'll see that information is a fairly long text. It's formatted here as a couple of uh, paragraphs. And that doesn't all fit within the three lines of the text entry box that we're looking at here. Well, there's a way that you can bring up a larger window for editing longer text. You do that by right-clicking anywhere in that uh, text field and choose this last choice, Edit Field in a Larger Pop-Up Window. And let me bring this into view. And here's a larger window, which makes it much more comfortable for me to edit a longer text. And I can make this window bigger. It'll reformat. And really, I can make as much space as I need to edit even very long text. You'll notice also the way that multiple paragraphs are handled. Um, by having a complete blank line between blocks of text, that will cause the display of that text, let's return here all the way back to the item details, will cause the display of that text to be formatted as separate paragraphs. So that's how you do it, by just including a blank line um, in the text that you want uh, to separate into paragraphs. Now, return again to the edit window. Now, the edit window is itself resizable. So let's like make it bigger here. This causes more fields to be displayed. And if you don't want to be scrolling down, it's often desirable to make the edit window as uh, you know, bigger than it might come up initially. And even when you close it down, if you bring it up again, the system remembers how big you made it and returns it to that larger size. Now, if you make the edit window very large, the program will try to reformat it into uh, a double-columned set of fields so that hopefully, as in this case, all of your data fields can fit 
on one screen without having to re-scroll, uh, without having to scroll at all to reach it. But let's return it now to uh, a size similar to what we had to start with. Now, I'll show you another, another data entry feature. Let's move down here to the references. Let's say I have a new reference I want to put in um, to a book by Nordenschuld. Now, Nordenschuld happens to be spelled with an accented character, and you can insert accented characters into your text. And let me show you how. Right here, I've got to the point where I want to insert an O with an umlaut. And um, I can do that by bringing up the uh, context menu and choose Insert Special Character. And in the Insert Special Character, you'll see pretty much all the available accented characters as well as some other symbols. I'll choose an O with an umlaut, uh, umlaut insert and close, and finish typing the name and the reference. And there I have it. And again, if I click OK, and look back here, there's Nordenschuld with the special character. So um, you can do accented characters easily within the editing window. Now, some of the features of the editing environment are controlled through preferences. And let me show you that. On the options menu, you pick preferences and then choose the data entry and editing tab. And I want to look at the last couple of uh, items here. The last one is this is the compact layout for wide entry editing windows. That's what we just saw when I made uh, earlier when I made the editing window very large and it reformatted itself into two columns and fit all of the fields in one screenful. To get that behavior, you need to turn on this last choice. If you don't turn on that choice, It'll use the larger size of the window, but it won't format it compactly in, those, in that two-column format. So you need to turn that on if you want that behavior. Notice right above it, you also have a choice about those long uh, text entry boxes for, for long text values. We were seeing three lines in, in each, but you can change that. Let's make it be six lines. Let's click OK. Let's click Edit. And now notice the editing window these long text fields show considerably more. Now, of course, that makes it harder to fit everything, and you need to scroll more to access the different fields, but it's a trade-off, and you can choose which way you prefer. Now, notice at the bottom there's a field that says, Keep Collection Window Synchronized. What that means is that what is shown in the uh, Item Details window, the one we see in the background, can be, you can force it to stay in sync with the editing window. So let's do that. Let's say I want to keep the window synchronized. Now if I use one of these buttons, OK, go to Next, or go to, go to Previous, watch what happens when I click Go to Next. It goes to the next record, but simultaneously, without having to do anything, the Item Details window switched to the same record. So it keeps the two records in sync. And often you want to do that because you want to be able to go back and forth and see the effects of your editing on your item details. But occasionally you won't want to keep them synchronized. For example, suppose you want to copy data from one record to a different record. Well, you might want the record you're copying from in the item details where you can copy, uh, where you can select text and choose copy off the edit menu and then switch to the edit window and paste it in for a different record. So in that case, you would choose to not keep the uh, windows synchronized. But I'll leave it as synchronized right now. Now, notice there's a Copy Fields button here. What that does is it allows you to uh, copy multiple fields worth of data from one record to another. Imagine, for example, that I had just acquired a second copy of this same map, and I want to add a new record to my collection database for that second copy. But I don't really want to have to type in again all of the data that's going to be the same between the two records, and that's where you use copy fields. So let's click copy fields, and now it's asking me, well, which fields do I want to have copied? Let's start by clearing them all off. And now let's just click the fields 
that are in fact going to be identical um, when I go from one uh, record to the new record. Information will be the same, condition might be different, printing method will be the same, the references will be the same, the region will be the same, and the source of the map will be the same. The other things might be different in a second copy, but that's fine. Also notice there's a choice at the bottom as to whether to highlight those fields that are copyable, and I'll choose to do that. So let's say copy selected fields. Now, let me click OK here um, to get out of the editing window, and let's say I'm now ready to add the new record. So I'm going to choose from the edit menu, add new record, and it opens up a blank editing window. Well, this is the point at which I can now choose Paste Fields. And this is going to paste in for me all of the fields from the previous record that I chose to copy. So now I only have to fill in you know, the, the few fields that might have different values in this copy compared to the other copy. Since I'm here, let me show you one other feature having to do with data entry. In the map maker, for example, let's say that wasn't a field that I'd copied. It was a field I want to enter. If I know that I have some other records in the database that already have the same value for map maker, I have some other maps by that same map maker, I can type the first few letters of that name and then hit the escape key, and it automatically fills in the rest of the name. So um, that's a nice feature. If you if you just type you know, uh, one letter and you hit escape and you have multiple different values that all start with that same letter or letters, it'll bring you a list and you can choose from that list to fill it in. Okay. Let's cancel and let's go back to, to the original edit window we had. Notice the status field here. It's highlighted as present. That's a drop-down list. A drop-down list, also referred to as a pick list, is a way that you can make the data entry window have choices to pick from rather than having always to type in values. And there's a separate video on the site that shows you how you set up pick lists and associate them with fields so that they then show up, like we see here for status, as a drop-down list. There's another set of features that I'm not covering in this uh, video, but which are covered in a separate video, which have to do for, with setting up other kinds of hyperlinks. There's really a, a fairly large variety of hyperlinks you can have. We've seen just one of them so far, this jump to link that we had here um, on this number 15. But you can also set up hyperlinks that will jump to, will open a browser and jump to a web page. You can have fancier versions of hyperlinks which jump to other records in your collection. They don't have to just be the ID number. You can have arbitrary text and then turn that into a hyperlink which will jump you to another place in your collection. You can have hyperlinks that bring up footnotes when you click on them. You can have hyperlinks that uh, open and play audio clips, video clips, or open arbitrary documents like spreadsheets or um, Word documents, other or PDF files, other kinds of documents can be automatically opened by a single click. Um, but as I say, this is covered in another video on the site. So that's a uh, quick overview of some tips and tricks to help you get the most out of Recollector's editing environment.